Hello and welcome to my shop. I hope you enjoy the following video. I'm going to make some bench dogs and I set up a small jig here uh, so that I could cut the dials to four inches long. So um, I'm measuring there with a tie square and uh, I'll cut some lengths of dowel. Using this method made it much easier to hold the dowel in position um, so it wouldn't spin while I was uh, cutting it. Um, and actually the hole that I drilled in that piece of wood was a test hole to make sure that the dowels fitted in it comfortably. So uh, using one of my Japanese saws, which my son kindly uh, gave to me for a uh, birthday present, he bought me a set of three and they're fabulous saws to work with. I love them. Nice uh, thin kerf and razor sharp. So, half a dozen dogs ready for the Paul Sellers treatment. Uh, I watched his video quite a long time ago and I referred back to it. And uh, we're going to make these dogs the way that he made them. And uh, to be quite honest, it's, it's absolutely dirt cheap and extremely easy. Here I'm just checking that they're, yep thumbs up and checking that the dogs do fit in the holes they are quite uh, tight on their own they they won't fall out but with the extra help that I'm gonna do with the um, wire coat hanger um, that will hold them nice and firmly in whatever position that they're put in So first off, let's cut the shoulder and then I will cut down to that shoulder at a very slight angle inwards so that there's only backward pressure on the dog, it will still remain straight when the piece of wood is uh, pushed up towards it. Already this uh, Rubo bench is giving me plenty of clamping options. Um, you can see me using here the uh, block of wood that I drilled the test hole in. And I've dropped the dog down through that hole and lined it up with a hole at the bottom. 
and then I just use the hammer just to tighten it up clamped into position so that makes it a very safe cut the dowel doesn't move it's rock steady and uh, I love it I just uh, think it's wonderful to be able to have this sort of clamping options in my workshop which I've never had before I'm going to drill a hole now um, to receive the coat hanger wire um, about, about an inch below that uh, shoulder line and I will drill it all the way through and I'm using the back of board there so I don't drill into my nice new uh, bench and then I'm going to drill a hole about the uh, half the depth of the drill into the base of the dog hole. I say this method is well documented on YouTube. Uh, there's plenty of people who have, who have done this method. I first saw it on the Paul Sellers channel. I'm now just going to measure up the front of the dowel uh, to see where I need to cut the trench to receive the wire frame. There I just checked that the wire frame, wire coat hanger rather, would fit into that uh, notch and it was deep enough. And I'm using a couple of clamps here that I've got a shoulder on them at the back. And you can see me pushing it in between them and another clamp at the front. And uh, that'll hold it in position whilst I trench out the, the front portion up to the hole that I drilled just below the, uh, the shoulder line. What's nice about these saws is you can probably see me there just using the back end of the saw. The saw is so sharp that it just rips out the wood and it rips it out clean. And on the front of the saw there's a rise up and you'll see me in a minute use the front of this saw just to uh, just to finalise a little bit up to the hole. But this, doing these dogs was a very, very easy task. Uh, I didn't overshoot where the top hole was because of the angle of that bottom blade that you can see me doing there. And uh, it was a very, very easy job. Um, I did start the job with a little bit of trepidation, but uh, thinking, will I get this right? Here I'm using the front of the saw now, it's got that curved section on it, just to gently push my way up to that hole. Because of that curved section, it misses the top portion.
Right, here we go. Now we're going to insert the wire cutting out, bend it to a 90 degree angle. And then bend it another 90 degree angle. Just marking where I need to bend it with a pair of pliers. Now I'll measure for the uh, top hole. Let's get my pencil out here and just mark it off for where the pliers want to go. And we'll do another 90 degree bend. I had to use a hammer there, those, uh, those cutters are so blunt it's untrue. Now I've got the length. I can finish off the final turn into the top hole. Bit of debris in there, I'm just going to drill that out. I did come back later on and make that hole uh, a size up because <clears throat> I found if it was too tight, I made the bottom one tight because I didn't want the wire falling out. But I did find that if the top hole was just another size up, uh, the spring mechanism worked much, much better. Otherwise it tended to go in and stay in. And there we go, it works. It took me about uh, 13, 14 minutes to do that. Bearing in mind I've never done anything like this before. I'm sure other skilled woodworkers would be able to knock one of these out in about five minutes. Just going to adjust the camera here so that we can see it going into one of the dog holes. So let's try it out, in it goes, it holds, goes down, pushes up, great, pleased, couldn't be better, I hope you enjoyed watching it. Thank you for watching, please comment and subscribe, thumbs up, thumbs down, I don't mind which. Thank you for watching.